Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're actually going to be doing a video where it's Casper coin versus Bitcoin. So we're not going to be doing a real comparison and telling you which one's better in terms of like which one I would use, but I'm going to be doing a comparison kind of similar to this Casper versus Alethium video because it did really well. I thought I'd do a Casper versus Bitcoin video and it's basically going over the technicals of Casper coin versus Bitcoin. So if you've seen the Alethium video, most of the Casper coin information is the same. We're just going to compare it strictly to Bitcoin. So make sure you guys like this video and subscribe because we're trying to hit 3000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if we hit that goal, then maybe I'll give away some Casper coin as a kind of New Year's Eve thing. So let's get into the video. So Casper, we're talking on this metric of transactions per second as the first point. Casper does around 400 transactions per second. So I've hyperlinked these just so we can click around. As it says here, there is a bracketed and it says 2,500 transactions per second with tested potential to scale further. So this is on the Casper Rust website. And it says here with 6,400 to 20,000 transactions per second, this is either at 32 blocks per second or 100 blocks per second, which would be 20,000. Basically, when Rust comes in, they have it currently tested at 2,500 transactions per second, but it has the potential to scale up further to 32 blocks per second to 100 blocks per second on mainnet. Now with Bitcoin, the average transactions is around seven at the high end for transactions per second. So not as quick as Casper coin, obviously. We know Bitcoin's very slow in terms of transactions per second. In the future, we'll not be able to sustain the amount if it turns into a real currency. This is one of the main points that we'll cover in the end of the video as this duality between Casper and Bitcoin. So there is obviously the Lightning Network which aims to solve the limitations by providing instant and inexpensive transactions while achieving a throughput of 1 million transactions per second. So that is a potential but also it is a layer 2 so you need another layer to actually put on top of Bitcoin to make it run that fast. So with Casper coin, it's strictly layer one. There's no other layers on top of it. Now, when it comes to transaction time, Casper is around one second. So they have one second block times on Casper coin, which means, you know, basically I've done speed tests on the channel, so you can look around for those, but it's pretty much instant transactions on the scale of like Visa and MasterCard. They basically go through instantly. The only thing that really limitates or puts any limitation on that is definitely the internet connection that you have through the both wallets so maybe one might not update but on the network it's averaging one second however for bitcoin obviously we know it's 600 seconds so that's a 10 minute block time so this means that transactions are processed on average every 10 minutes so if your block is processed and you just put the transaction in it might come through quicker or it might come through slower depending on when the transaction is actually put into the block or if you miss a block, stuff like that. So clearly Casper has a way better potential in terms of a currency or at least a payment processing because this 600 second transaction time or this 10 minute transaction time is not very efficient in terms of payment processing. Obviously it has its caveats, but Casper is a low transaction time with high TPS, that's what they're going for. So I'm not saying that it beats out Bitcoin by any means because we're not doing that type of comparison. I'm just showing you the technicals, but this is what they look like. When we're moving down to another figure and that is fees. So on Casper coin, the fee is 0.000051. That's in USD and on Bitcoin on average, it's 1.603. So where I got these figures from, this is from the Casper coin medium page. Here's the breakdown 0.001 Casper per UTXO fee. So per transaction fee, basically, this is the transaction fee for each UTXO in a transaction. And there can only be 85. So you can do the calculations. Anyway, if we convert this, so this number of Casper coin times it by the USD price of Casper coin, it gives us this figure here for the transaction fee of a transaction. Now that is extremely cheap. Obviously Casper coin doesn't have as many transactions going on the network. So transaction fees would be slightly lower when comparison to Bitcoin because Bitcoin does have more volume. 
going on the network. And this figure here is actually taken from the average Bitcoin transaction fees, as we can see here, 1.603, so, that, so that's $1.60. I know that this was from the second previous day, but I didn't have this updated value when I made this document. Now, when it comes to mining, Casper is built on K-heavy hash, very efficient for mining and processing transactions. The difference between GPU and ASIC is very substantial when compared to Bitcoin mining with a GPU and an ASIC. So what I mean by that is that the transition between the two coins, so when Bitcoin moved to ASIC, the ASICs weren't necessarily as efficient because the algorithm isn't as efficient. The K-heavy hash algorithm is very efficient, so this means that the chips are also very efficient at mining. Already reached the full progression to ASICs, so on the same level as ASIC mining BTC. Emissions are based on a curve over time at an increasing rate, no strict block halving. When we look here, emission schedule, this is the emission schedule, and it's going to end in 2037. So we are around the point up here. So we're very early on in the emission schedule in terms of the block reduction, but we are sitting at 155. And when we go over to no strip block halving, you can see here, you can see the actual curve that it works on. So Bitcoin will work on a curve in theory, but it's not as a substantial curve as Casper coin. When we look here, BTC built on SHA-256 can't be mined on GPUs or FPGAs, so Casper coin can still be mined on GPUs and FPGAs, ASICs only currently. Strict block halving every four years, we all know this. This is at the start, this is the second four years, the third four years, the fourth four years, and now we are soon to enter this fifth block reduction right here. And then it goes all the way down and it ends at 2140 around that time. So in our lifetime, we will definitely see the end of Casper coin mining. However, probably not for Bitcoin mining. Now, when it comes to market cap, Casper coin has around number 44 with a billion dollars in market cap. As we can see here, this is listed on coin gecko. So the rankings aren't proper on coin market cap, but Casper is actually sitting at 46th in terms of cryptocurrencies with a market cap of around 1.1 billion. It changes up and down dependent on the price. Bitcoin on the other hand, number one, obviously 677 billion in market cap, as we can see there, obviously subject to change based on the price of these assets. When it comes to supply, we can also check the emission schedule to see that Casper coin has a supply of 28.5 billion around that range. And as we know, Bitcoin has a supply of 21 million. So supply doesn't really matter too much in terms of metrics because every coin can be divided by a certain amount into Satoshis or into the relative one for Casper coin as well, the relative denominations. So it doesn't really matter in terms of the supply. I just put it up there just so you guys know how far along we are. So Casper coin, I believe, is at around 70%. Bitcoin is at 93% and Casper coin is at 74%. So it's around 20% away from what Bitcoin supply is, but this is ever increasing slightly more quicker than Bitcoin, so it will take over it in due time. In development for Casper coin, we have a bunch of things as we can see here. There are a lot of things that are gonna be in testing or development for a while. The Dagnite, the consensus to follow the Dagnite protocol, so this will come actually after the Casper Rust language for coding. So this is going to take the blocks per second from one block per second, all the way up to 10 blocks per second at the minimum, 32 blocks, and then eventually, hopefully 100 blocks per second, depending on the network. So they've got that all implemented and that should be coming soon. Also Dagnite on top of that basically makes it a parameterless cryptocurrency. Parameterless meaning that they don't have to hard code anything to protect the network security. Basically meaning that the network reacts to attacks in real time. They've already completed the mobile wallet development, further increased blocks per second, so that is in the Rust section as well. Integrate Casper for use on Ledger, 2023 white paper, archival node improvements, and smart contract implementation, so it will have smart contract usability. When it comes to Bitcoin development, obviously we know developers aren't exactly touching the code as per se, but they are making slight improvements, you know, just to wallets and stuff like that. But for the most part, nothing is being 
added in terms of development in a big sense for Bitcoin. Now, as I said, this is not a comparison video between the two. They both do relatively different things in the cryptocurrency market space. Obviously, Bitcoin being the hedge against inflation and Casper coin trying to be a either payment processor or a standard currency. And I've seen a lot of people comparing Casper to being the Bitcoin gold or the Casper silver. But what I truly think is that we would need to move away from the dollar and we would actually have to have a Bitcoin, which is the hedge against inflation or in the normal market would be gold. And then Casper is actually the currency. But what you would do is you'd back the Casper using the Bitcoin as a standard. That's mainly what I would see for the future in terms of Casper coin if it gets up there to the top market caps and if it implements the high transactions per second that we've seen come in through the testnet 11 that they're doing on Rust. So if you guys actually want to do some more research, I'll leave this document linked in the description below and you guys can actually move around it, click on the hyperlinks and read a little bit more into all of this for Casper coin. I'm sure a lot of you know about Bitcoin already. Make sure you guys help out the channel, like the video and subscribe to hit 3000 subscribers by the end of the year and leave your opinion on Casper versus Bitcoin in the comments below.